I'm Aaron Gilbert, and I am a level designer, scripter, and somewhat of an artist. In this video, I'm going to briefly cover my custom campaign level for Star Wars Battlefront 2, titled Europa Vostok Station. To start off, I'll talk about the level itself for a bit, and then I'll cover my design process in creating the level. Let's get started. Europa Vostok Station is a single-player campaign level for Mass Effect Unification, my total conversion mod for Star Wars Battlefront 2. The level was designed to be like a side mission for Mass Effect 2 or 3 in the sense that it is a more or less self-contained story arc that wouldn't necessarily tie into the game's overarching story. I won't delve very deep into the story, but the gist of the mission's premise is that a research station on Europa called Vostok Station was attacked by a faction of enemies after the station's researchers found an ancient artifact of high value, so the player is tasked with securing the artifact and eliminating all enemies in the station. During the mission, the player goes through a series of objectives ranging from killing waves of enemies to securing areas and objects. The mission is completed when the player reaches the end of the level, and all of the enemies have been eliminated. Now, onto my design process for the level. So the level began as an idea to create a custom campaign map for Star Wars Battlefront 2, which I had never done before. For a number of years, I had wanted to create a Battlefront map set on Jupiter's moon Europa, so I decided to do so with my campaign map. With my idea in place, I began to flesh it out by conducting research by watching various lectures and talks from NASA and JPL about planned missions to Europa, as well as watching various documentaries about marine life and extreme deaths. Then, with a more fleshed out idea, I began working on my documentation, which consists of a level design document, a target references document, and somewhat of an art bible for the level. One of the things that I spent quite a bit of time on was how the research station would be structured from a logical point of view. I figured there would be five different sublevels, each being dedicated to a different set of operations. After completing a first pass of the documentation, I prototyped a wave-based combat system that would be used throughout the level. Once I had a solid first pass of the combat system built, I started drawing map layouts in my sketchbook based on each sublevel's operations, constantly iterating until I had what I wanted. I chose not to include any sort of detailed prop placements or anything like that in my map layouts, because it's generally just a lot easier for me to do that in a 3D environment. After I felt the layout sketches were final, I scanned them into Photoshop where I digitized them to use as rotoscopes, which leads to the next part of my design process, gray blocking. Now because Zero Engine doesn't support BSP or anything like that, like Unreal or Source do, I built the gray blocks in Softimage by using the map layouts as rotoscopes and shaping my geometry around them. I did, of course, also iterate on the size of each room to make sure that they weren't too large, but not too small. During the iteration process, I noticed that the level was quite lengthy, so as a solution, I decided to cut sublevel 2 completely, since it was really only just two large rooms and some corridors anyways. After cutting sublevel 2, I continued iterating on room sizes until I was happy with each one, and then I started gray blocking each room's cover layout and props. I spent a lot of time making sure each room's cover layout was unique, fun gameplay-wise, made logical sense to a certain degree, and adhered to different playstyles, all of which I made sure by testing out each room in-game and iterating. Once I was finished with gray blocking and I had set up all of the AI pathing and hint nodes in the level editor, I began scripting all of the player objectives. The scripting portion was relatively easy to do since it was a pretty copy-and-paste process. With the exception of two objectives that required the player to activate a panel, most of them are pretty much just tied in with the combat zones. Like, for example, one objective is to secure the reception. It is started when the player enters the reception, and completed when the reception's combat zone has been released. Like I said, pretty simple stuff. The heaviest portion of scripting, other than with the combat system, was with the cinematic system. Because the game does not natively support them, non-pre-rendered cinematics have only really been accomplished a couple of times in the past by modders, and only one of those modders is still around anyways, so I had very little to pull from. It really required a lot of creative thinking and problem solving, which I've been made very familiar with thanks to modding this game, but I'll save that for another video. So I'd like to wrap up with the arting, lighting, and polishing process of my level. It is worth noting that the arting process is still in progress, the reason being the fact that I only have essentially one and a half artists, the half being me. And while the level isn't huge, it's not exactly small, being a 30 to 40 minute experience. But enough about that, more about the process. My artist James and I have spent a large portion of time together discussing the level's architecture and that sort of thing, which began back during the documentation phase. 
after that was figured out, I sent him all of my final grade box, and he's been working on building the art assets since then. Each time he completes a pass of a mesh, I bring it into soft homage, where I set up the material flags such as glow, emiss of lighting, normal or specular shading, etc. The collision, and any hard point placements for things such as in-game lights. Ideally, I'd have him do these things if I could, but he works in Blender and not Softimage, which is where they have to be set up, so I do them instead. After all of our room's building mesh and props have received a first pass or more, I'll begin to light the room. Now, because Battlefront's level editor doesn't have any way to bake lighting into props, and because Battlefront doesn't support light maps in any form, you either have to deal with crappy-looking real-time lighting with nasty, unrealistic-looking shadows, or use Softimage to bake lighting its own mesh's diffuse maps, or as color information into its vertices. And for Europa, I chose to bake each building mesh's lighting information into its vertices. To do this, I set up each room's lighting, and I utilized Global Illumination and Final Gathering to bake realistic-looking lighting into each room's building mesh. In regards to my polishing process for Europa, it hasn't really quite reached that stage yet, but with my other projects, I tend to approach it by going through a map, looking for a specific category of issues, like for example floating props or, you know, a mesh's UV seeps or something like that, while making quick mental notes or physical notes of anything else I spot that I think needs adjusting or more polishing. And so, that's my level design process. I hope you've learned a lot more about me and what I can do. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you even more for considering me for your next design position. You can reach me by email at marth8880 at gmail.com. I'm Aaron Gilbert, and Keila Salai.